What's up guys, Logic Over Motion, and today we need to cover how the left is reacting to Trump saying that he will quickly fill Ruth Bader Ginsburg's Supreme Court seat after her recent passing. Our condolences to her and her family. Now, of course, since we are talking about the left, uh, you know there will be quite a bit of hypocrisy and emotion in this video. So without further ado, let's hop into the content. Now, before I begin this video, I'd like to ask you to comment, like, and share. If this is your first time here at Logic Over Motion, consider hitting that subscribe button. We'd love to have you as part of the channel because here we bring the hard truth while others are busy virtue signaling. So as most of you are aware, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away on September 18th from complications of metastatic pan uh, pancreatic cancer. Now, what, ev what has everyone on the left going crazy is the fact that now Trump has an opportunity to appoint another Supreme Court justice while just reading and doing some research, I came across a few articles that seem to try to, you know, or seem to try making the case that due to it being so close to the election that the nomination should be done after the November presidential election. There was a Washington Post article that pointed out two Republicans that disagreed with Trump's decision to quickly fill the seat. And this brings up uh, a quick point that I would, you know, like to address. It's totally fine if you go against your party. I feel, you know, we often vote down party lines a, a little bit too much. Um, but with these two, I kind of don't see the point. The first is Senator Lisa Murkowski of Alaska. Now, I'm sure many of you know who she is because she also voted against Brett Kavanaugh when he was up for nomination for the Supreme Court. I am not really sure what her angle is. I do know that Trump says she would never recover from voting against Brett Kavanaugh and that she would lose uh, her seat when she runs for re-election in 2022. But she also kind of strikes me as another Trump or a rhino Republican in name only because I remember she was asked if Trump had learned anything from being impeached and she, she said uh, that there were no strong indi indicators that he has. This leads me to believe she supported the impeachment and never really supported Trump. I know she also disagrees with him on health care and, and the environment, so she definitely sounds pretty left-leaning to me. The other Republican is Senator Susan Collins of Maine, I believe. She said that um, the president has the authority and that she wouldn't object to his nomination, but she basically feels that being so close to the presidential election, the fact that the Supreme Court appointments are for life, it just isn't fair to the American people. So speaking of fair, let's talk about fairness for a second. Now let's lay a little groundwork so we understand the process. When a Supreme Court seat needs to be filled, the president uh, nominates someone. The Senate then votes whether or not that person will assume the Supreme Court seat. Now back in 2016, Obama nominated Merrick Garland to replace um, Antonin um, Scalia who had just passed away. Now, the Republicans controlled the Senate, so naturally Garland did not get confirmed. This isn't, a, you know, this isn't rare at all. Um, and as a matter of fact, it's been a very long time since a Senate has approved a nominee of a president from the opposite party. Now, in the intro, I mentioned hypocrisy. However, we have a little coming from the right in this case. As I said it, if I see it, I call it. I don't care what side it's on. Now, if we remember when Obama was nominating Garland, Republicans had actually said that because it was an election year, there wasn't enough time to do the nomination and vote. Keep in mind, Garland's nomination was in March of 2016, meaning that they had a lot more time than the Republicans have now. And the Democrats are showing the same hypocrisy because they felt that Obama should have nominated Garland no matter what, um, as a result of it being in the election year and that he should go ahead and push that through. So why wouldn't Trump do the same thing? Look, the fact of the matter is Trump won this one. Fortunately, he is in a position where he has to nominate another Supreme Court justice, and it also happens that Republicans control the Senate. Trump is 100% within his rights to go forward with the nomination. What annoys me here is how the Democrats are playing to the emotions, acting like Trump is, is stealing the seat or something. Just, you know, take the L understand the things didn't line up for you this time. At some point, the shoe will be on the other foot and, you know, they will control the Senate and a Republican president will have to nominate someone and you would be correct to assume that they would not confirm whoever was nominated by that Republican president. I think if people fully understood 
the processes of our judicial system, it would be harder to make these types of claims or arguments. So of course the Democrats will make it out as if Trump is doing something wrong when in fact it's perfectly legal and has for the most part always been done this way. So I hope this cleared you know that process up a little for anyone out there. Make sure to take time and to learn about how our systems work. It's more important than you think. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for this one. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. And as always, you guys take care.